Hello, welcome to video two in this series on max and min values. The last video, we just looked at definitions, we looked at a graph, we got a, a sort of a feel of what a max and min value is, local and absolute. Now we want to discuss how we go about finding these. There's some theorems that are at work behind the scenes. Let's start with the extreme value theorem. Here's what it says. As long as your function is continuous on an interval that is closed, then you're sure that the function will attain its absolute maximum value somewhere inside the interval or on the endpoints. There's going to be some value C that's inside of our AB interval, maybe on the endpoints, that the F of C will be the absolute maximum value and the F of D will be the absolute minimum value. It will attain its absolute maximum and its absolute minimum as long as the interval is closed and the function is continuous on that interval. The issue with the, this theorem is that it is an existence theorem. It doesn't tell us how to find it. All right. So here's an example of what's going on with this theorem. So just a quick little sketch here. I have my interval A to B. Okay, closed interval, and my C value is leading to my absolute maximum, and my D value is leading to my absolute minimum. They could occur on the inside, like in this drawing. One of them can occur at the endpoints, like in this drawing, perfectly fine. And who's to say that they can occur more than once? Like in this drawing, we have the maximum occurring twice. The theorem just says that you're guaranteed that they're going to occur at least once. All right, we're going to pair this theorem up with another theorem, and then we'll have our mechanism to help us find these absolute maximum and absolute minimum values. And later, in the next set of videos, we're going to look at how to find the local maximum and the local minimum values. All right, the next theorem is called Fermat's theorem. Now, there's many, many theorems that were made by Fermat. This is the one that's going to help us figure out critical points. All right. So if your function f for sure has a local maximum or a local minimum at some c value, and you are sure that your derivative exists, Fermat's theorem says the derivative has to be 0 at that value of c. If we go back to one of our previous slides, we saw some horizontal tangent lines, and then we saw one sharp point where the derivative didn't even exist. And so the theorem says that if you do have a local maximum or a local minimum at, the, at some x value equals c, and you're sure that your derivative does exist, guarantee then it must be a horizontal tangent line at x equals c. The f prime of c equals 0. The issue with this theorem, like with a lot of theorems, we try to think, well, okay, it's an if-then statement. That's a conditional. If your hypothesis is true, then you have your conclusion. Most people try to run things backwards and say, what about going the other way? If your conclusion is true, does it, can you lead to the hypothesis? And here, that's not the case. Okay, Just because your derivative is zero doesn't guarantee that you're going to have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum value. It opens the door for it, but it's not a guarantee. Okay. If your derivative is equal to zero, you can't automatically conclude that your function has a local max or a local minimum value. Well, we got to see an example, right? Our favorite example, y equals x cubed. It's looking at the origin like it wants to reach a maximum, but actually, if you look at it from the other side, it wants to reach a minimum. And so it has all the qualities though, right? The function is x cubed, its derivative is 3x squared, and when you plug an x equals zero into that, you get a zero. So this is a function who has a zero derivative. But x equals zero is the place that where you have the zero derivative, and it's not a place where you have a local maximum nor a local minimum. So it's sort of in between. OK? All right, so but finding the places where your derivative equals zero is going to open the door. OK? So Fermat's theorem suggests that if you're going to be looking for these maximum and minimums, the locals, um, then you should start with the places where your derivative is equal to zero. 
Okay, so you have to do some algebra to solve or some trig or something. Take a derivative, set it equal to zero. Start there, but then also you need to seek out places where your derivative doesn't exist at. Okay, the combination of these x values are called your critical numbers. Some people might use the word critical points instead. Okay. All right, so um, that lays the groundwork. Extreme value theorem together with Fermat's theorem. Extreme value theorem was geared towards the absolute maximum, absolute minimum. Okay. Fermat's theorem is geared towards the local maximum, local minimum. And so um, in our next example, we'll just look at finding critical points. And then we'll look at what do you need to do to find the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum value? According to extreme value theorem, as long as your interval is closed, that's enough. Okay. But um, let's go ahead and end this video for now. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Uh, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. And uh, on to the next video. The link will be in the description. See ya.